Welcome back. Today I want to go over Om Chapa in the chakras. Now I've gone over quite a bit how the central nervous system and the brain are hooked together and the place that they meet is the chakras. And so to bring about the deeper freeze response and the roll up of consciousness, we're doing the Om Chapa in the chakras, right? So I'm going to go over that a little bit today. But primarily, I want to talk about what is going on in the brain specifically when we do the Om Japa chanting. How is that benefiting our meditation in a very deep and profound way? So let's get into it. So first of all, we have these chakras, right? Okay, we've got a brain and we've got a central nervous system. And these two things hook together through what we call chakras, okay? And so it's a lot of projection. Just like psychology, it's a lot of projection. Your brain does not have any place to sort out or reason out the feelings that it feels. Heartache, fear. It doesn't have a place to put those. And so it throws it down because it's hooked up with the central nervous system. So it throws it down into the body. And for a great example, the martial artists are very concerned about what they call the, the hara, the third chakra, right? The dantian. They're really concerned about that. And lo and behold, the third chakra just happens to be the reservoir of fear in the body. So if you're studying a martial art, wouldn't you want to overcome a lot of fear? Well, that's why they use it quite a bit. It's also very grounding. And so that really helps the martial artist to stand there and get a sword swung at you and deal with it. It helps that process tremendously to concentrate on the third chakra. So just by putting your mind there, you're already disrupting the natural flow of the projection. The projection is designed to go outwards into the world, right? And connect you with the world, right? So from the brain to the central nervous system, outward. That's the flow of energetic consciousness, right? That's the flow of your nervous system. Nobody can argue with that, right? Pretty simple. And so we want to disrupt that. We want to cut it in half and cause it to roll back into the brain. And so we ohm into the chakras, not just one, but all of them, all six. Now you're gonna hear people say there's seven. Well, that's the lotus on top, that's a little bit different. And so we use that to expand. We don't necessarily use it to disconnect from the outward world. To do that specifically, we want to use the medulla, the throat, the heart, the third, the second, and the first chakra. Those chakras we want to use, and we want to start at the bottom and work our way up because that will unlock us gradually towards the brain as we do it over and over again. It's not lickety split and it's done. It's not a pill that we pop and it's done, but it's this wonderful process that we keep working. And then boom, we feel ourselves as if we have been lifted up into the heart or lifted up into the brain. And so I call that the roll up of consciousness, right? Because it reminds me of those old roller shades. You know, you'd pull it down and then you let it go and it would automatically go home. It would go up in its home, right? And that's what happens to your consciousness is when it is letting go of the identification with the body. So that's what we're doing. We're interrupting the identification because the brain says, I am in the heart. And then the heart says, well, I'm connected to everything out here, right, as an example. And so through every single one of the chakras, that same process is taking place. And so we're cutting that. We're interrupting it. We're interrupting that flow and causing it to roll back into the brain. So that's very simply is how the Om Japa is working in the chakras and their projection. There's something else going on as well, though. And a very deep student of mine had a beautiful vision of this and he shared it with me. And I want to share it with you because it's absolutely correct. So first of all, when you are using a chant, whether it's Om Japa, whether it's a, 
a long chant, whether it's a short chant, you are using the same voice that you speak to yourself with, right? So when you're thinking in your head, right, and you can't stop thinking to yourself, all of that is taking place with the left hippocampus. So that same cup that we usually think with is being filled up with the chant. And the wonderful thing about a full cup is you can't use it anymore. And so the voice in your head is drastically reduced because you have a chant in it. <laughs> and so you're filling up the cup. But when we practice Om Japa in the chakras, we're doing one other thing. And that is we are emptying the cup. So we Om and then we pause. And then we Om and then we pause. So there's a chant and then there's a gap. And then there's a chant and then there's a gap. And so you're filling up the cup, you're emptying the cup. You're filling the cup, you're emptying the cup. You're filling the cup, you're emptying the cup. On and on and on. And in that short, brief bit of silence, you're using a little bit more of the right brain. And so you're going back and forth. Left brain, right brain. Left brain, right brain. Left brain, right brain. Words, silence. Chant, silence. Over and over and over again. Filling the cup, emptying the cup. Filling the cup, emptying the cup. Over and over. So it becomes very much like a light switch. By the way, this is what happens when your five-year-old gets away from you with a pen. So we turn it on, we turn it off. We turn it on, we turn it off. No words, words. Chant, no chant. And I can hear the voice of my dad telling me, stop playing with the light switch. You're going to make it short out. It won't work anymore. And that's exactly what we're doing. We're shorting out the left brain. On again, off again. On again, off again. On again, off again. And what's happening? We're shorting out its ability to keep a conversation going. It's just like having a conversation with somebody and they keep interrupting you and you want to get out. Your, I, I wanted to say and I want it and they keep interrupting you. And pretty soon I can't even remember what I was going to say. You interrupted my train of thought. That little nagging voice in the left brain gets interrupted so much it loses itself. It's shorting it out just like a light switch, just like my dad yelling at me, don't play with the light switch, you're gonna short it out, it won't work anymore. And that's what we're causing to happen in the left brain temporarily. So if you notice, when you're doing the Om Japa, pay attention to the chant, pay attention to the non-chant, pay attention to the chant, pay attention to the non-chant, over and over again. And it will help this process, it will help you be relieved from the left brain and get more and more in touch with the right brain and silence. Because silence and peace and tranquility are all in the domain of the right brain. Whereas the left brain can be quite hyper. It's hyper, 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 right? But the right brain is tranquility and peace. And so by shorting out the left brain, we get a deeper taste of the right brain. So I hope you love this. I hope it makes sense. I hope it gives you a deeper appreciation for chanting because it's really magical in its ability to cause transformation in meditation. And then eventually we get into a place where we have the freeze response. We have the tranquil breath. We have the roll-up of consciousness, and then we can stop everything, and we just sit there, and we just play the witness. We just become the witness and enjoy the fruits of all of this labor. So we get into this very, very peaceful place where we're not doing anything. That's quite a change from the left brain, but that's where we're going, into the non-dual state. It's not easy to get into the non-dual state. And that's why these processes can help us so much to quiet the body, which helps quiet the mind, 
and we get into these very, very, very peaceful states. So I hope you love this. If you did, be sure to hit that bell down below so I can see all of you.